Clara Frances Dadding Ali is a chef and a licensed cosmetologist in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. She is also the chair and immigration lead of Halifax Pride. Frances came to Canada from Nigeria in 2010 to study. She bagged a Bachelor of Arts in Gender and Women's Studies. Being black and proud in Canada means a lot to Frances. That explains why she is on a journey to become the best version of herself. Her heart beats for the hospitality industry, which led to the birth of a Nigerian kitchen in Halifax. Um, the name of my um, kitchen is Franny's Kitchen Nigerian Cuisine, and I made sure that Nigeria is part of my um, name, and it's all one word because I'm proud of where I'm coming from, and I'm proud to represent my country. Being the best is a mindset for Frances, as she's also exploring her prowess in cosmetic business. Our conversation with this young black entrepreneur was inspiring. We talked about her passion for good food, support for African students in Halifax, and dreams for the future. Thank you so much for joining me. How are you doing? I'm good, you? Good. It was so interesting running into you at the Nigeria High Commission the last time where you just walked up to me and said, oh, this is what I do. See my card. That shows me that you're very passionate about the things you do. And it's something you want people around you and in the community to know about. Right. Yeah. I would say I'm more about like a customer service um, person. Like I love the community and I try to help as much as I can. I guess that is what got you into the entertainment and hospitality business. How are you doing with this business in Halifax? Let's start with the food because I know a lot of people love Nigerian cuisine. When people order on Uber Eats, DoorDash or Skip the Dishes, Sometimes I feel like maybe it's just Nigerians, but when I go down to give them the food, I'm like, okay. I, I find Chinese people, I find Indians, I find Caribbeans, everybody enjoy the food. And um, people who don't really know what to get, they will always call me and be like, oh, Francis, what's your favorite dish? Or like, what's something everybody buys on your menu? And the first thing I say, it's the beef sear. Oh. Because people can relate to like barbecue and um, beef. So um, I find Caucasians, everybody want to taste like my meal. And um, not just because I'm the one cooking, because it's Frances, but they want to taste a little bit of where I'm coming from. You see, that's the beauty of diversity in Canada, right? Yeah, it is. And I'm so happy. Like, I'm grateful that I have people who want to try our food. Your business is booming, isn't it? <laughs> um, I would say it's getting there. I'm hoping that at some point I'm going to get a location of my own. <laughs> and um, I will have like a good space to get my restaurant up and running. <laughs> I'm also passionate about hair. Like there's something beautiful about someone getting up from my chair and looking like a million bucks. So <laughs> it's not just making people smile and making their belly full, but for hair, I got them too. <laughs> It 
it's something that has been my passion for a very long time. And um, the way I kind of handle the food and hair business, some days I'm open for hair, some days I'm open for food. Um, but I'm not really like taking new clients for hair because I just want to focus on the cooking aspect at the moment. Excellent. I like the fact that you're multitasking and you're doing a bit of hair and then doing food even though you're more tilted towards the food. And you know what I like about the salon? African Caribbean and black people in particular find it very difficult to get their hair done um, by people who are not from there because of the uniqueness of our hair, the texture and the styles we do. So when you find someone who comes from your place, take for instance, I want to braid my hair. It's a thing of interest to find out that there's somebody from West Africa who does it very well, who can do what we call DD and all that for me. You know, it, it will take me back to Nigeria and make me feel that despite the fact that I'm not in Nigeria, I'm in Canada, but I can still carry on my culture. Excellent job. Good for you. You, you get people from different walks of life coming to do hair. And when I say that, I mean not necessarily Nigerians coming to your salon. Yes, I do get a lot of people. Um, I've had Chinese men come to get their hair braided. I've had um, Caucasian women come to get their hair braided. And you know, what, when you said, um, talked about a West African braider, um, oh, I have my, I finally got my um, cosmetologist license um, last year. So, oh, girl. Um, <laughs> thank you. So I'm, I'm not just a braider, but I'm also a cosmetologist. I could work on different types of hair, color cuts and um, relaxer. Um, I, there's, this story is so unique. This happened, I think, 2014. Um, a client of mine called me or sent me a text message and she said, oh, someone met her at the gym and she gave her my information. And when this lady came to me, she is a Caucasian woman. She came with the right hair extension. And she told me, she said, when she was at the gym, she saw a lady with braids and she asked her, do you know any African that could get my hair braided? She turned and she was like, you're so specific about who you want to braid your hair. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I just moved from Calgary. I was like, okay. Um, well, you're in the right hands, and um, I will get, definitely get your hair done. And one good thing a lot of clients love about my work is when they come to me, they have a picture in mind. I look at your face, I look at your hair texture, and I, I tell you straight to the point, if this hair is going to look good on you or if it's not going to look good on, good on you. So I'm not somebody that just takes the money. I also give them like, advice, consultation before I go into their hair. You gave out food to students at the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic. Tell me a bit about your experience with the students. So during the pandemic, I was in the bathroom and I was just like, like what are students going through on campus with this lockdown? Like the rooms are very small. And I know at some point while I was on campus, I did not have a phone. I did not have a laptop. So... I know there are students who are still on campus and don't have that. And if everything is shut down, I'm sure like the library is shut down. So how are they going to survive? When you look at the health sector, nurses, doctors, everyone is trying to make sure that we, we are safe and um, we have some like a kind of support. So the only way I know I could help is by cooking. So I decided to buy a big box of um, chicken. And, I, and I, when I started, I said I would be able to feed 50 students free of charge. And that's because what I could afford was just a big box of chicken and like a big bag of rice and other things. So when I posted it, people came sending me messages. Oh, they can, aff they can give me $10 or $5 and a lady brought a big bag of rice. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so I cooked everything. Um, 
I did not have a car. My partner then helped me. We, we loaded everything in her car. We were, we, after cooking, we uh, went into the universities and um, African students who sent me messages came out of their building to take the food. So I did um, a plate of jollof rice. Um, you could get puff puff or you could get plantain and barbecue chicken. Oh. And some people who wanted jello fries, or I'm um, sorry, fried rice, I did that too. So you just have to tell me if you want jello fries or if you want fried rice. So I did that the first year. And one thing I do is like when I volunteer myself, I, vol I volunteer because it's my passion and I want to make sure people know that there are other people in the world that care. I, I'm always somebody who preach about kindness because you don't even know what the next person is going through. So a way to make sure or to tell African students on campus they are not alone is by giving them Nigerian cuisine and making them feel at home. So are you giving this food to Nigerian students or students generally? Um, the first year, it was just um, to African students on campus. But then the second year, when they had another shutdown thing in March, I decided to do another batch, but this time, not just Africans, but like Caribbeans and any other person who wants to try or like taste Nigerian cuisine. So that was when I got in on the news, I wasn't expecting it or anything. That's you just staying on your own and carrying out this assignment. You could have said, oh, this is not something that I can handle alone, but you didn't. You decided that let me just start with what I have. And some other people now noticed what you're doing and decided to support you financially to carry out that assignment. I want to say, Frances, I'm proud of you and I'm sure that the High Commissioner of Nigeria to Canada, His Excellency Adeinka Shekun, will be proud of you too, knowing that you've been able to represent Nigeria very well in Halifax. So good for you. Thank you so much. Thank you.